It was at a dinner three weeks ago that the chief executive of the NatWest Group found herself sitting beside the BBC's business editor. The top business story of the moment was Nigel Farage's claim that he'd been thrown out of the NatWest subsidiary Coots for his political views. No wonder then that the BBC's Simon Jack took the opportunity to ask NatWest Dame Alison Rose about it. Well, today, Dame Alison finally admitted to a serious error of judgment in the reply she gave in implying that Mr Farage had lost his Coots account for commercial reasons. Tonight she got the kind of backing that struggling football managers dread, the full confidence of the board, yet her pay package may be affected. Mr Farage said Dame Allison and other bosses at the bank should go and the biggest shareholder in NatWest Bank, as Dame Allison well knows, is still the British taxpayer. The whole system is rotten. British banking's gone rotten. Debanked, unfairly treated and on the warpath. NatWest and the BBC have apologised to Nigel Farage, but on his show on GB News tonight, he insisted he still has questions he wants answered. Somebody is lying. In a moment, I'll tell you who I think it is. Coots is a private bank for the very wealthy and is owned by the NatWest Group. Three weeks ago, the BBC reported that Coots had shut Nigel Farage's accounts because he no longer met its financial requirements and that the decision was commercial. Nigel Farage fought back, insisting the motivation was political. He obtained an internal report which showed his political views were a consideration. Yesterday, the BBC accepted its report was inaccurate and apologised, but its business editor tweeted the story had come from a trusted and senior source. Today, that source revealed themselves. Alison Rose, chief executive of the NatWest Group. In a statement this afternoon, she said, I recognise that in my conversations with Simon Jack of the BBC, I made a serious error of judgment in discussing Mr Farage's relationship with the bank. She added, I would like to emphasise that in responding to Mr Jack's questions, I did not reveal any personal financial information about Mr Farage. But I recognise that I left Mr Jack with the impression that the decision to close Mr Farage's accounts was solely a commercial one. NatWest chairman said Alison Rose should not have spoken in the way she did and that her bonus this year will reflect that. But Howard Davis described her as an outstanding leader and said the board had full confidence in her. Tonight, though, there are already calls for her to go. You should think about standing down. Uh, I mean, you know, it's the only honourable thing to do. G given the breach of confidence that she is, uh, I'm, I'm willing to believe it was a mistake, but it was a very bad mistake. And, you know, one of her subordinates uh, did it. She'd sack them, I would think. And she must apply the same rules to herself. That's a sentiment this man supports. After his show, Nigel Farage called on the government, NatWest's biggest shareholder, to intervene. It erodes confidence in London as a business banking centre. We, the taxpayer, our taxes went up to bail these so-and-sos out. Uh, and on Friday morning, we're going to get the six-month uh, profits. There's also going to be a presentation to investors. And I hope the British government say no confidence. Sometimes sorry brings closure, but as far as Nigel Farage is concerned, this isn't over yet. Joel, I mean, there's so many aspects to this story, but we should focus presumably on one element, and that is the shareholders in this. What is the government going to do about it, given that the Treasury, the taxpayers are the biggest shareholder? Yeah, the government holds 38% of all the shares in circulation. In theory, Julie, that's a minority stake. In practice, that's an enormous amount of influence. Now, throughout NatWest and previously Royal Bank of Scotland's time, the government position has always been we're an arm-length shareholder. The, the bank is operationally independent. Who leads it is a matter from the board. And clearly, NatWest is hoping that this they can they can tough this out that Alison Rose can stay in post but I think the signs are that the shareholder is about to flex its muscle Andrew Griffiths we know has summoned bank bosses Alison Rose will be meeting him uh, um, working at the Treasury and government sources tonight have told ITV News explicitly that the Prime Minister and the Chancellor are not or have significant concerns about Alison Rose remaining in post I think the writing's on the wall here 
there are a number of investigations now in train because of this. Just take us through those, what the scope is, the length of them, and, and ultimately, potentially, what the impact is. Yeah, Nigel Farage feels there's a clear contradiction between the explanation he's been given by the BBC and the explanation that Alison Rose has offered up. Now, I spoke to him just before we came on air, and he confirmed that he's made a complaint to the Information Commissioner's Office. Remember, there are data protection rules for individuals they're taking incredibly seriously, and that will trigger an investigation. He has not complained to the Financial Services uh, Ombudsman. He's free to do so, but didn't consider it worth his while. I think of greatest importance that West itself has launched an independent investigation, which has been welcomed, note, by the Financial Conduct Authority tonight. Uh, if you look at Nigel Farage's Twitter feed, he's, he's sending out the, uh, the rules, the very strict and binding rules that govern conduct and behaviour of individuals, but also organisations, Julie. And it has welcomed this independent investigation. It does have enforcement investigatory powers. Depending on what the investigation pulls up, it may well decide to pursue them. And if it deems that these rules around integrity, skill, care, diligence, uh, treating customers fairly, proper standards of market conduct have been breached in some way, shape or form, it can fine individuals or organisations, it can also ban them. OK, it's got a long way to go yet. Thank you very much indeed for all the detail on that, Joel. Thank you.